Close your eyes and I'll kiss you Welcome to my channel my name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review a few months ago I purchased this Wingsung 629 not only is this fountain pen trying very hard to look and feel like a Mont Blanc 146 but it's also trying to function like a Mont Blanc 146 in that it is a piston filler and it has a number six size gold nib I tried to answer a question at the time of this review and that was is the gold nib worth the extra $100 over the steel nib version? I couldn't answer that question because I didn't have a steel nib version of this pen. But now I have one. So let's find out whether gold is better than steel right now. What I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. The gold nib version of the Wing Song 629 came in a lovely box. Here it is. Lovely little box. And the steel nib version, Wait for it. you guessed it, did not. It came in bubble pack. The box isn't really that important, but if you spend $140 Canadian for a pen, you'd be pissed if it came in bubble wrap. Oh, it makes me mad. <laughs> First, let's look at the difference between these two pens. There are a lot of options with both gold and steel versions of the Wingsong 629. You can get both gold and steel versions in either the classic cigar shape, like this one, or the version with the flat and finials. And both body shapes are available with either clear ink windows or ones with slots. I got the 14 karat gold nib version in the classic cigar shape with a full clear ink window and the flat top version with a steel nib and the slots. Essentially, they're exactly the same pens with just those differences. Both are piston fillers, both have ink windows and both have number six size nibs. But let's look at the steel flat finial design pen in detail. From the top, we see the flat finial with a gold colored medallion on the top that has a logo made from some Chinese character I can't decipher and the year 2013. I have no idea what the 2013 means. It certainly isn't the year of Wing Song's founding. We'll see that year in a moment. But your guess is as good as mine. This is a relatively new model, so it can't be the year of the manufacture of this pen. The finial tapers up to a gold colored ring, which is attached to the clip. And the clip is very springy and very usable. And it's curiously similar uh, to a Mont Blanc clip. But before you get your righteously indignant panties in a twist. I don't like spam. Oh, don't make a fuss, dear. I'll, I'll have your spam. I love it both the Platinum President and the Sailor 1911 Large have very similar nibs as well, but that's okay then. The precious resin, or what we experts call injection molded plastic cap, tapers up to three gold cap rings, two thin and one thick one in the middle. The middle one has Wing Sung 629, deeply engraved on the on the center band and made in China on the back. And that right there should remove any doubt that this might be a Mont Blanc. The end of the cap tapers down to the barrel where there's a very, very slight step down and the barrel is straight to about here where it begins to taper down to another gold colored ring which separates 
the barrel from the piston knob which has a flat bottom and you can look all you want there folks but you won't see any injection molding gates on any part of this pen no seams no injection molding gates the pen is very very well polished the cap unscrews with about one full rotation to reveal a black tapering plastic section with a large flared gold colored ring at the top towards the number six size two-tone steel nib and black plastic feed the section is a good length and thickness and that flared gold ring can help keep your fingers from traveling towards the nib the cap threads here are smooth and unobtrusive very comfortable let's get a closer look at this nib there is some filigree work in the border and then it says 1947 the year of incorporation for wingsung the actual wingsung logo wing s and an f for fine the nib and feet are friction fit and not part of an unscrewable nib assembly let's take a moment to compare the 14 karat gold wingsung nib with this steel version the two nibs are almost identical except the gold nib has 14k 585 and a laser etched m for medium and you can tell the one on the right is gold it has that gold color whereas the steel one looks fairly brassy the feeds are identical and the nibs and the feeds can be swapped between these two pens easily if we look down the barrel a bit we can see the difference between the full ink window here i've drained it a bit of ink so you can see through that and here's the slotted one there i thought i'd like the larger ink window but actually this one's more attractive the inside of the cap shows a plastic cap liner that helps seal the nib from drying out the cap posts deeply and securely and although it makes the pen slightly long in the hand it doesn't unbalance the pen because the cap weighs so little unposted the pen is plenty long enough to write with comfortably both pens feel exactly the same in the hand either posted or unposted here's the cigar shape unposted they feel exactly the same in the hand and that's hardly surprising because they're both functionally identical and yes not just the nibs and feeds are swappable the caps and the piston mechanisms are swappable as well i bought this pen on aliexpress for 36 dollars 43 with free shipping now let's look at some size comparisons and here is the wingsung 629 steel with a wingsong 629 14 karat gold a platinum president a sailor 1911 large and a wingsong 628 now let's look at them posted and here they are posted now let's look at them unposted and here they are unposted the sailor 1911 large has a 21 karat gold nib the platinum president has an 18 karat gold nib and the wingsung 628 here has a 14 karat gold nib but its nib size is a number five and the 628 is also a cartridge converter pen as are the sailor and the platinum now let's look at some measurements and i'll be back with a writing sample And we're back with the writing portion of the review this is clairefontaine 90 gsm paper and this is the wing song six to nine and it has a number six size fine steel nib and let's check the wetness it's decently wet for a fine nib and the nib is very smooth with a hint of feedback but very smooth and the ink today is Hiroshizuku Takisume 
Takisumi. And here are some closed matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. And as to line variation, well, it's a Chinese steel nib. There's not a lot of variation to be had. Very stiff. The line this pen makes is 0 0.4 millimeters, which makes it a Western extra fine or a Japanese fine. But let's also look at the gold nibbed version of the 629. And here it is. This is the Wing Sung 629. And it has a number six size medium 14 karat gold nib. The ink is the same. And this has a good deal of feedback. It is very fine, so it's not really a medium at all. This is the same size. In fact, just slightly smaller. So between a 0 0.03 and a 0 0.04 millimeter uh, which makes it a Western extra fine or a Japanese fine, but functionally identical uh, to the steel nib version. But the big difference is in line variation. You see that I'm able to push out a little bit of line variation, and that makes the pen feel a bit bouncier for want of a better technical term. Now this is not a flex nib. This gold nibbed pen is not a flex, although you can push a much thicker line out of it. This gets down to about 0.7 millimeters at this point. And let's switch back to the steel nib for our quote. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? The big question here was, is the Wing Song 629 with the 14 karat gold nib worth the extra 100 bucks over the steel nib version of exactly the same pen? The two pens are identical and I like the way they both feel. Uh, they're both extremely well made. There are no seams, no gates, as the precious resin plastic has been highly, highly polished. Compare that to a Platinum 3776, where not only can you see the injection molding seams, you can actually feel them too. But the difference in the nibs is actually negligible. Do you really need some bounce in your nib? Well, the 14 karat gold nib has plenty of bounce to it. It isn't nearly as soft and bouncy as the Sailor 1911 Large is, uh, but you can definitely feel the softness of this 14 karat gold wingsong nib. Is that worth a hundred bucks to you? It isn't to me because I find the steel nib version writes identically to the gold nib in my everyday writing. You see, I'm not a calligrapher and I don't press on the page. In fact, I try to keep my writing as light on the page as possible. Yes, the steel nib has feedback and drag on the page, uh, but so does the gold nib. And all of that feedback can be adjusted with a little bit of 12,000 grit micromesh. It's a popular misconception that a gold nib is smoother on the page than steel because gold is smoother and softer than steel, of course. Gold may indeed be smoother and softer than steel, but neither of those materials are actually on the tipping of the nibs on these modern fountain pens. And the tipping is the material on the nib that actually touches the page. It's the iridium or whatever some sort of hard iridium-like alloy that most fountain pens have on the tips. That is the rubber that hits the road of your paper. And that tipping material can be smoothed. As far as I can tell, gold nibs are highly praised and sought after because of three things. Looks, corrosion resistance, and flexibility. Let's examine those three things. One, 
Gold has a greater luster than plated steel. That's just a fact. Gold polishes up better as well. You polish a gold plated nib too much and you'll wear right through the plating. Number two, corrosion. Gold does not corrode like steel. And since your nib will be in contact with ink for many years, having a nib that does not react to the chemicals and pH of fountain pen inks means your nib will last longer. And number three, flexibility. Gold is softer than steel, there's no doubt about that. However, just being a gold nib doesn't mean the nib is bouncy or flexible at all. Here's my Platinum President with an 18 karat gold nib. There's no bounce in this nib at all. And 18 karat gold is even softer than 14 karat gold. It's the shape of the nib that influences the flex and bounce of the nib way more than its material composition. Let's look at these nibs from Leonardo that they call elastic nibs. The steel elastic nib flexes because of the cutouts and the shape of the nib. Given all of the above, these two pens are almost identical in writing with the exception that the gold nib has a bit more bounce to it because of the softer gold material. The smoothness of the two nibs has nothing to do with the gold versus steel and more to do with the degree to which the nib's tipping material is polished. Personally, I wouldn't consider the difference between these two pens worth the extra hundred bucks for the gold. So if you want a classic looking, well-built, comfortable, smooth, and wet writing fountain pen for roughly 30 bucks, the Wingsung 629 is a great buy. Oh, and don't forget, it is a piston filler as well, so you get a really nice amount of ink. And the piston mechanism can be removed for cleaning with this inexpensive wrench that you can buy on eBay or AliExpress. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens, as I am now an affiliate of the online store, and when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comments section, and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.